Now it's been a while since I actually bought this Zui Weibo S as well as the Crane M2. Now both of these are excellent gimbals and rather easy to use compared with whatever that is out there but I seldom use these days for a few reasons. But to be fair, I actually own one gimbal now seeing that I actually sold my M2 to get this Weber S. For today's video, we're going to discover some of the reasons why and perhaps give you guys some consideration points before you decide to get a gimbal yourself. But as you guys can see, we are actually in a very unique place and I think I really got to show you guys this place. It's actually 47 stories up and a very nice view of the city. The number one reason is actually time hindrance. Now here I have is my Weber S, oops, as well as all the accessories that it comes with. Now why is it in this box? It actually, if you guys can see the unboxing video for Weber S, it actually does not have an all-in-one carrying case. So this is just a makeshift one. And along with my Weber S, here is my A7 II camera. Let's do a quick timing to be able to see how long I actually take to set this whole thing up. So my stopwatch is almost ready. So let's go. Now as you guys can see, it's been some time since I actually set up a gimbal so it's actually much much longer than I expected. Alright, finally it's set up. Let's see how long it took. Okay, you can see it actually took up to about 9 minutes to be able to just to get this whole thing set up. Of course, I think I could do it faster if I've been putting up gimbals every day, maybe about half the time but it still takes at least 5 minutes to get this whole thing done. Number two, digital stabilization. Now here I have is my Sony ZV-1 and inbuilt this has a technology called Steady Shot which actually stabilizes your footage. And if you need more, there's actually a PC program or a desktop program called Catalyst Browse which actually can stabilize it further. Now let's see how this thing does in terms of digital stabilization. Let's do a test. As you guys can see, I'm not using any tripod. I'm really just vlogging with it. And this is a footage with no stabilization. And here is a shot with stabilization with the steady shot turned on. And lastly, the one with Catalyst Browse. When I move it here this way, I'm sure you can notice a very vast difference in the stabilization. I'm sure you can agree that the last footage is the most pleasant and watchable video. So actually post-production or this program called Catalyst Browse is really genius. Now, third alternative or reasons are actually tripods. Tripods are actually a caveman alternative to this stabilization issue that we have. Now, even though tripods do take a bit of time to be able to have the camera screw on and to be able to have this whole thing set up, I'm sure it's much faster than setting up a whole gimbal such as the Weber S or other gimbals in the matter of fact. So, what am I trying to say? That I don't use gimbals anymore? No, for plan or paid projects, I still use them. But for run and gun content such as YouTube, setting one of all these things up is quite a big hindrance for me. As I prioritize getting creative angles in an instant, more than getting butter smooth stabilization. I also not agree that I don't use gimbals because I still use this really often. This is my DJI Pocket 2, which is basically a pocket gimbal. Now it takes little to no effort getting this whole thing set up because all you have to do is basically just on it and it's actually ready to go. Let me turn this around. Ready to go. There's no need for balance or calibration compared with this thing. And this little thing has almost everything that you need. Do you need a little tripod? The creative combo has it. You can just open it up and just attach it at the bottom. Do you need a wide angle lens? There is one. Do you need a clip on microphone? There is one too, along with its fluffy little thing. Now, so basically all this thing lacks to me is just a larger sensor to be able to compete with bigger cameras. So I do really think that these kind of small little pocket gimbals are the way forward compared to traditional ones which have so many deterring obstacles and factors. So, do you guys agree or disagree? Do you own one of these smaller pocket gimbals or one of these more traditional gimbals? Or do you think GoPro and Insta360 GO 2 are better options? Leave me down in the comments below. If not, I'll see you guys in the next video.